Our reading today is taken from Psalm 84, verses 1 to 12. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord God Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength, till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favour on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose way of life is blameless. Lord God Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Psalm 84, uh, going through the valley of Baca, the valley of weeping, and some of those songs that you picked this morning, which you probably didn't know the theme of my um, service today, is just about suffering and pain and affliction. And being a Pentecostal, sometimes we Pentecostals and Charismatics, we do not have a good theology when it comes to suffering. Because we're always living in cloud nine and, and no one gets ill. You know, we're all healed. And if you don't get heal, healed, there's something wrong with your faith. And uh, that is bad theology. Uh, we need to understand that we are human and uh, uh, there are times in our lives we will have seasons and valleys, low times and high times. There will be times that we don't understand. There will be valleys, uh, hardship. But how, how, do we do, how do we manage those? And that's why I appreciate the songs this morning because it, it really reflected something of, of having uh, reality but yet having faith. And we do need faith, particularly in those moments in our lives that there's confusion and darkness and we don't fully understand. But first of all, and I'm glad, thank you, Rob, for this water. I might need it. Uh, but first of all, I want to tell you a little story about Leroy. Leroy was coming to his birthday, and he said to his mom and dad, uh, I want a bicycle for my birthday. Mom and dad turned to him and said, Leroy, you haven't been such a good boy this year. Uh, we suggest that you go and write a letter to Jesus. So he sits down and uh, gathers his thoughts, and he said, Dear Jesus, I've been a good boy this year. Uh, could I have a bicycle, please, your friend, Leroy? Well, he understood that wasn't entirely true, so he tore up the letter, threw it in the bin, and off he went. He started again. Dear Jesus, I've been an okay boy this year. Could I have a bicycle, Leroy? Again, he thought to himself, well, that wasn't entirely true, so he tore it up, put it in the bin, and he goes outside. Wandering around his community, he ends up in a Catholic church. And he doesn't know what to do, but he sits there for a moment, gathers his thoughts, and on his way out, he grabs a little statue, runs home, and puts it under his bed. And he writes the following note. Jesus, I've got your mom. If you ever want to see her again, give me a bike. <laughs> we might laugh at that. It's only a joke, of course. But how many of us as Christians think that we can manipulate Almighty God 
All we have to do is name it and claim it. All we have to do is live by faith. All we have to do is pray and fast, and everything will be comfortable in our lives. Give me, give me, give me, my name's Jimmy. And God forbid that we think that we can manipulate God Almighty. There are seasons in our lives that we don't understand. There are seasons in our lives that we will go through valleys. But we do need faith. Yes, of course we need faith. And that's why uh, we need to understand there's ups and downs on our journey. And we live by faith. But we cannot manipulate God by our works. And we certainly cannot manipulate God by our religion. Sometimes we treat God like a vending machine. All I have to do is say the right things, put in the right change, and then put down my hand for the prize. God forbid that be our concept of our Christian lives. And sometimes I have found in my deepest times of suffering and confusion and darkness has been a gift where God has enlarged my capacity to receive more of Him and to know more of Him. It was Paul who said, I I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, and I thank God I'm not ashamed. If there's any hope for this world today, it's only in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because, thank God, it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Our Christian walk begins with faith in our acceptance of Christ as Savior and Lord, and our encounter with God, and our Christian faith ends with faith, and our journey to that destiny, we live by faith. Faith is important. And when we come to Psalm 84, and that's my thought, because when uh, I come to a visiting church, we have thousands of thoughts and thousands of sermons. Lord, what do you want me to bring? My thought came around Psalm 84. Because I want to bring you a word of encouragement. In a time of maybe you don't understand all things and it's dark and confused. Because in Psalm 84, it describes a life of faith in the midst of pain and rejection. It describes a man who's longing for God as he goes through a valley of weeping. And I want you to understand that whilst we believe that God is always with us and that He will always lead us in triumph in Christ, there are seasons on this journey where we feel vulnerable, where we feel insecure, where we don't see all things clear. Times when we Don't feel the presence of God and that God is with us. The psalmist had a right heart. He's longing for God. He's longing and desiring to worship God in Jerusalem. In verse 1, he says, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul longs, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out, for the living God. Here is a guy who's longing to to worship God in Jerusalem. And so the question on our journey of faith, are we thirsty for the living God? Are we thirsty to know the presence of God daily? Are we longing for the manifestation to experience something of His power and His glory? The psalmist in Psalm uh, 63 said, Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Your soul thirsts, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land 
where there is no water, so I look for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. There was the focus of his heart. There was, that is why he lived. He lived for God. And I pray that we too will live for God, not manipulate God, not to see what we can get out of God, but to live for his power and his glory. Amen. God created us that we would have a, an inner thirst for him. And the psalmist, he reveals his heart and his desire. In verse 2, O Lord, my soul longs, yea, faints, faints for the courts of the Lord. In verse 4, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are still praising you. And verse 10, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. In verse 5, he says, blessed is the man. And I'm reading from the New King James. Blessed are those, uh, the NIVA says, blessed are those, but blessed is the man. And I emphasize that for a reason, because this man is blessed. This man, his strength, and when I say man, I'm referring to all of us, that's including you ladies, okay? But this person is blessed. This person is, his strength is in God. And we need to remind ourselves, in good times and in bad times, God is the strength of our lives. He is our strength, and He is our sufficiency, our power to live. Life is found only in God. Amen. But He uses, he uses a word here, blessed. It's a non-changing blessedness. No matter what circumstances might be, I will still know an inner peace and joy because I am governed in this blessedness, not by my emotions, not by how I feel or what I see around me. I am blessed because of the inner peace and joy that I have in my relationship with God. Blessed is the man. This is no ordinary person. This person has been set apart for God's blessing. And isn't it true that each of us who have come to know Christ, we too have been set apart? Amen. We are chosen, chosen to be blessed, chosen to uh, embrace that so great salvation. We have destiny and purpose and life because we are blessed. We have been set apart. Amen. In fact, the Bible says we're peculiar. You, you might want to turn to your neighbor and say, you're peculiar, or you may not, but what does it mean? It means I, I belong exclusively to who? Him, the Lord God Almighty. Amen. So this is no ordinary man. He's been set apart for God's strength, and we too have been set apart for strength. And then in verse 5 we go on, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I could not live this Christian life unless I knew the strength of my God. It's not found in my human ability. It's not found in my weakness. It's, it, it's found in God. And don't go around thinking, oh, you've achieved this and you've done that. Aren't you so good? No. If you're so good and so great, it's because God has blessed you. Amen. God has blessed you. But whose strength is in you? For he knows that one day uh, he's going to dwell in God's house. He's longing. He's longing to put his, his, his feet on the road that leads to Jerusalem. That's, that's the whole scene of Psalm 84. This guy longs to put his feet 
on the road that leads to the place of worship. And is God not the strength of our lives? As we have come and worshipped in some of the songs that we have sung today, reminding us again of that road we're on, of, that we are blessed, blessed. Is not our hope and confidence set on worshipping him face to face in our heavenly Jerusalem? Is God not reminding us again how brief our time is here on earth and that we are just pilgrims? We too are on a journey, but one day we're going to reach a final destiny and see Jesus face to face, and we shall be like him. Amen. We read in verse 5, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. That's where his heart is. That's his focus. And sometimes we need to be careful that we're not building life around things of this world and our materialism and building up and storing up bigger barns, because this is not our home. We're passing through, amen. We too are pilgrims. We're on a journey. Yes, we have a mission. But we need to remind ourselves of our final destiny. Listen whose heart is set on pilgrimage. And as, as they pass through the valley of Becca, they make it a spring. Ooh, I love this song. Because this is when the journey becomes tedious. This is when this journey becomes hard to bear because of the experience of a valley. The psalmist describes it as the Valley of Baca. Now, the Valley of Baca was known as a valley of weeping because of the balsam trees. And the trees would weep, but the trees would also dry up the ground around, making the valley a dry place. I'm sure if I were to ask you this morning, have you ever been in a dry place in your Christian experience? I'm sure if we're honest enough, we'd all say yes. Hard times, difficult times. God, where are you? That's why I say sometimes as Pentecostals, charismatics, some of us don't have good theology when it comes to suffering because it's always triumphant. Yes, God will lead us to triumph. Yes, we need faith. However, there are seasons I don't understand, and I'm confused, and I need to look to him. Amen. So the valley is a dry place, but this man, this man is still blessed. Amen. Even in the valley, he's still blessed. Because why? His strength is in God. Because this man... And you will see this man transforms the valley from a place of weeping into a place of refreshment. And there's, there is the power and the sufficiency and the grace of our God to transform that which is bad and make a good outcome. Amen. Hear my word to you this morning. Weeping may Endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And we too can know the power of the Lord to make the dry seasons in our lives a place of springs. Because as they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. And the rain also covers it with pools, and they go from strength to strength. And listen, each one appears before God in Zion. Let me not forget that point, because there's our destiny, amen. Did you get that? There's my security. There's my hope and confidence that I too will appear in the heavenly Zion, amen. And I will worship the Lord my God. 
But let's look a little closer this morning at verse 6. Because as they pass through the valley of Baca, listen to what the psalmist said, passing through. The psalmist knows his goal. He knows his destination. His destiny is not some valley of dryness and hardship. His destiny destiny is not his suffering and pain. It's only for a season. He is passing through. Amen. He's enduring it, but he's not staying there. He's going through it. I love what the psalmist says in Psalm 16. He said, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart, my heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. I'm going to ask you this morning, what does your heart instruct you in those seasons when it's dry and hard and you describe it as a valley. What does your heart teach you? Yes, we like it when everything is good and everything is working according to our plan. But the, David learned a lesson to set the Lord before him and to let his heart instruct him. And I find when we set God before us as the focus of our lives, then we can take instruction from our heart in the dry seasons, because he too is on our right hand. So what advice do you take from your heart during those seasons when you can describe this darkness? Verse 6, going through the valley of Baca, speaks of endurance. It speaks of tenacity of heart. It speaks of a spirit that will not give up. How many just give up? Give up. God forbid having put our hand to the ply and following Jesus Christ, we give up because it's getting too hard. I pray that there will be tenacity in our hearts because God gave his life for me that I might live. Because Jesus died and rose again that I would live a Christian life, yes, full of faith and joy and peace, but to be a light and to share a mission to the world, the mission of knowing God's love. God forbid that I just give up because it got hard. Yes, it will get hard at times. However, the God is with us, and we're blessed, and our strength is in God. Amen. So in your personal valley of weeping, may you experience, and you, as you might experience, the cold winter of death and bereavement. Maybe in your valley of weeping, it's because because you you feel that it's a dark night of doubt and God is no longer with you. For others, your valley of Becca might be a season of depression. Joy is withered. There's no purpose in your life. You are weary because of the demands and responsibilities of life, and there appears to be no hope. I want to throw a lifeline to you this morning, and this is my message. If you feel you are drowning in the midst of your despair, hope in God. Hope in God. Because in Him, you live, move, and have your being. Amen. He has your life in the palm of His hand. He will not let you go. Amen. Jesus said, no one can pluck them out of my hand. And even if you feel God is not there, God is there, amen. Even though we don't feel it, he still has purpose. Blessed is the man whose hope is in the Lord, said David. And sometimes we feel our winter, our weeping, may never come to an end. It was in C.S. Lewis in Narnia, The presence of the white witch was to never give any hope. Her occupation is that it is always winter, but never Christmas. 
I've got good news. Your winter will come to an end. Hallelujah. Because the valley of Baca is not your final destiny. I love what Songs of Songs um, portrays, and we can refer to the Lord speaking directly to us. My beloved spoke and said to me, what has he said to me? He said, arise, rise up, my love, my fair one, come away. For though winter is past and the rain is over and gone, amen. And thank God, whether on this earth or the next, we too will say, winter is past. So getting out of your valley may take some time, but you will go through it. And sometimes God allows uh, us to travel through those periods of darkness. I'm not saying He brings them, but He, he will use them. Those periods we can call winter, because it's in these times we learn to lean on God. And that's why we can say with the Apostle Paul, for my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, will I rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, take pleasure in infirmities, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sakes. For when I am weak, I am strong. The worst thing I could do when passing through the valley of Baca, is to sit down and have a self-party pity, to start complaining. The moment you do that, you give an opportunity to the enemy to steal your joy and peace from your life. Arise from your winter. Get up, move on. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Paul said, in all things give thanks. He didn't say for all things, but he said, in all things give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. I'm almost finished, and I just feel the Spirit wanting to bring this to a conclusion. And I feel the Spirit of God wants to minister to us today. And maybe, maybe your joy is withered. God wants to bring a release of joy back into your heart, amen. But as I, as I try and bring this to a conclusion, note what it says. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it, its pools. I, I love what the Living Bible um, translates this. It becomes a place of springs where pools of blessing and refreshment collect after the rains. Praise God. So, it's under adversity we can discover some of the greatest realities of our spiritual experience. But how do I transform? How do I transform those seasons of doubt those seasons of hardship, those seasons of adversity, how do I transform them into a place of blessing? Here's a, a number of things. Very right, quickly. Have patience. Not only do you need faith, but you need patience. Yes, you need faith because we live by faith and not by sight. Faith sees beyond the circumstances and sees God. Amen. Not only do I need patience and faith, but I, I need persistence as I go through the valley. Therefore, do not lose heart, even though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. What else do I need to do? I need to lay hold of the promises of God. 
I thank God in those seasons when I thought my life, my ministry was over many, many years ago because of the season that I was going through. It was the Rima word of God that God spoke directly to me. Hallelujah. I can remember one time, and I, I won't go into too much detail, but a, a very, very close friend turned around and said, you're a fraud. Oof. Now, that was like a dagger going into my heart. You know, someone close saying, you're, you're not genuine. So I had a day, not too far, well, a little bit up the road from here, uh, at the spring. In those days, the spring was open up at Highmore Hall, and I loved going up, having maybe days just me and God. And God, God knew my heart, and I said, God, God, what do you think about me? I asked God a question. What do you think about me? And I suddenly read Psalm, I think it was Psalm 42. And I thought, oh, it's a lovely Psalm. I read it. And it says something like, now remember, I asked God a question. What do you think about me? And this I am well pleased with you because the enemy has not triumphed over you. And I came to the end of Psalm 42, and I thought, oh, that's a lovely psalm. Isn't it amazing when you feel the Spirit of God pricking your heart? And I'll never forget the experience. And I felt the Spirit say, read it again. Because I read it with natural eyes, and it was logo, logos, but it wasn't the rhema. I read it again, and the Spirit of God suddenly hit me. Because I asked God a question, and God answered right away. And this, I am well pleased with you, because the enemy has not triumphed. Isn't it amazing? I could read it the first time and not get it. But when I read it the second time, the rima and the Spirit of God brought life. Amen. And you know, that verse kept me alive. I'm still ministering today because of that experience of Highmore Hall. So take hold of the promises of, promises of God. Do not give up. You've got destiny. You've got purpose, amen. The enemy cannot steal that. Yes, it may be delayed, but he cannot steal it. We read in this psalm, they go from strength to strength, amen. Each one appears before God in Zion. That's their destination. Their destiny, amen. And we too, no matter what happens in our journey, the enemy cannot take our destiny in him. Our calling, praise God, because we are secure. Isn't that marvelous? Now, I'm not going to ask for people to, to stand up individually, but I'm, I'm going to ask you just to stand. And as you stand, I want you just to close your eyes for a moment. And maybe in your journey of faith, you need a renewal in heart. Because one of the best ways of, of going through the valley of making it a spring is to renew your mind, renewing your mind, and having a renewed mind. And maybe, maybe the enemy has just taken so much from you in past months and past years, and maybe there is weariness. But I, if, if that's you today, just lift your hands and surrender to him. And that is your commitment to God. And say, God, I'm coming. Just renew my heart. God, just lift your hands in, in, in faith to him. And believing that God is going to minister to you where you, are, where you are by the Spirit of God. You don't have to stay in the Valley of Baca. You don't have to stay there. You can turn that place into a place of refreshment. And if it's dry right now in your Christian experience, as you lift your hand up before God, not before me, but before God, believe by faith that God's going to renew your heart as you make a fresh commitment to God today. Amen. Even though you don't know all things, understand all things, you're committing your life to Him today. And Lord, whatever experience you're going through, let the Holy Spirit bring joy right now. Amen. As you lift your hands before Him, just, just receive it from God. Receive the Spirit's renewal in your heart, bringing hope, bringing peace, bringing joy. Maybe, maybe you've been away from God, but as you just lift your hands and surrender, that's, that's you're lifting holy hands and surrender. Why don't you make a little prayer? Oh, Lord God, Lord God, renew my heart. 
Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Just whisper that right now where you are to God. God, renew my heart as I surrender my way to you, even though I go through the valley of Baca. I will make it a place of refreshment. So as you're standing before God today, God knows your heart. God knows your focus. God knows everything about you. But you're committing your way to him, even though you don't understand all things. Lord, I pray for your people. I pray, oh God, as we surrender our lives afresh to you, in fresh commitment in understanding you, O oh God, God, I pray, I pray that the Spirit would move amongst us and strengthen us and give us tenacity and confidence to go from strength to strength in our spiritual journey, that you be glorified in our lives. And so, Lord, as your word has gone out today, bring life, we pray, bring life in the name of Jesus, renew hearts and minds, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord.